Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve, and in this episode of Quick Charge, we'll be looking at the ADS Tech Energy Charge Box System, a battery backup, high power, 320 kilowatt uh, station that can deliver significant amounts of power to even the Ionic 5. So that's what we did. We drove down to one of our local installs of this relatively new EV fast charging technology and took okay, a look. So neatly branded in the reverse camera there, and. Should get plugged in here pretty quick because we have uh, cooling temperatures and I'm sure the battery temperature is only going to cool down as well. Let's... So it's on EV Connect. Got a touch to start screen as well. Don't have an EV Connect charge card on me, but it says you can download and launch or use a key fob plug-in vehicle let's start it up first so there are two here both say available in the app slightly disparate numbers this one ending 67 the other one ending 610 but we know which one it is 320 kilowatts so about as good as you're gonna get this big chunky CCS So we should be good for more or less full whack if these can deliver 320 at a max and we have a warm pack or warm as it's going to get it's not quite as low as you might want to be but uh, that state of charge we're going to get most that the Arnic 5 can take as long as this can give it and it's off to a pretty nice start Really clear touch screen here and already pushing up to 190. So not too shabby, we'll see how it progresses. But it's nice that you immediately get the voltage and the current. I'd always like to see a little explainer here for new folks to say this times this equals this or wattage and then how that translates to kilowatts. But it's still a nice clear graph. You've got your time, energy delivered, state of charge nice and clear easy stop charging button again these are new so you have to see how these hold up it's a pretty solid times to 80 percent uh that kind of indicates to me that we'd be pretty close to the 18 minutes 10 to 80 percent time that hyundai claims uh four minutes we had a minute of charging so you say 15 minutes and i would bet this is going to ramp to above 200 uh, so a solid enough start there it's 40 cents a kilowatt hour so not bad at all for this area at least some areas i know that gets a little bit expensive some of those interstate plazas doing 60 or above now uh, i start to think of 40 cents per kilowatt hour is pretty reasonable but we'll go and take a look at the equipment and we'll see if this ramps to more than 200 kilowatts at some point here so ADS Tech is a German company who you may be more familiar with these charges from uh, the Porsche dealership. So high power, fast charging all the way up to 320 kilowatts in this particular system. And one of the more unique pieces about it is that it is battery buffered against the grid so that you have a little more uh, supply there. In scenarios where the grid is power limited or you just want to have that buffer to trickle charge and maybe avoid some demand charges by pulling the power from the battery pack instead of the grid directly. Several other neat features about this particular set up it's uh, very quiet none of that high-pitched whine that you'll see at some of the earlier stations or uh, big fan driven cooling systems in the surrounding infrastructure so if you're looking at an urban environment or somewhere where you have noise concerns this could be something that's appealing there we are ramped up now that the ionic 5's got its bearings it's going to go to town and do that 230 240 kilowatt stint between 40 and 60 percent and then after that we'll ramp down into the low hundreds and beyond probably won't go all the way here because i've got some other places i want to visit but uh, i want to make sure we get the lion's share of this charge curve and uh get out in the rain before it really starts coming down and look at this site then there's the layout of it itself, whereas other solutions for high power fast charging have uh, very chunky cabinets. The batteries uh, can tend to go into the units themselves, free wire being the main uh, example I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, this is a really thin post and dispenser that's just literally a kind of mounting for the cable and a place to get it off the ground. Most of the action's happening in the charge box, which is admittedly quite beefy, chunky unit. But as you can see here at the Noria installation, it's kind of set back from the uh, dispensers themselves. So the actual 
footprint of the dispenser is not that significant, doesn't take up a whole lot of sidewalk. So pretty elegant solution, um, some interesting kind of dynamics to it with the cable management not really relying on something like the retractable pieces, which we have seen broken even on the Electrify America's newer stations, or the more robust ChemPower solution, which does have significantly large side wings to those spring-loaded cable management. Obviously gives you a lot of reach and uh, takes the weight off the cable, but this is more of a get it up high, put it out of the way, and then have the vehicle pull in the right place. So if you did uh, pull in the Ionic 5 here, for example, nose first, you wouldn't be able to reach the back, but as long as you reverse in or pull in, depending on where your charge port is, and uh, you would be able to plug in on either side of the car. So no big deal, even though the reach isn't quite as long as other cable management systems, it still does allow you, as long as you pull in correctly for your charge port, to get that plugged in fairly easily and keeps the cables off the ground. Okay, so we're already pushing it here. It's uh, past that 60% level and it's pulled down to 130 kilowatts. So I want to leave some space here in case we want to test out other locations along the way. I guess we should see the responsiveness of the touchscreen. So I do think they have idle fees here as well. I think it was something pretty substantial, like $10 an hour. Not that you'd know from that, but it does say unplug and return to the charging station. So 10 minutes, 33 kilowatt hours, a good chunk of the battery pack back. On the other side, that wouldn't reach if you were at the wrong angle. Got a vanity number here with the plug. And these were blue lighting when they're in use, although you'd see the EV using it obviously. Hasn't quite made it onto people's route planners yet, so, but right in the distance here, uh, probably almost see it, is I-495. You've got a brand new gas station with the pumps in the middle and the canopy. No canopy here, so we're not quite flying J levels of uh, futurism, but this is a really nice brand as a kind of convenience store. They've got lots of nice fresh stuff in there. Got the cafe and the uh, ground beans. And then in this thing, you've got the battery that I was talking about that we'll get onto in the video here. So another piece of hardware that we can add to the list of potential things that can get installed at these uh, new high power charging sites that uh, are increasingly being funded across the country. And it'll be interesting to see what other applications uh, kind of start to use this and whether it's something that people go with in those power limited areas or if they still prefer the free wire units that uh, are out there right now. So let us know what you think about this compared to other battery buffered systems, how the cable management works there if you like that or you'd prefer some kind of retractable uh, solution and how you feel about the UI and the general look of the site uh, in this ADS tech energy technology. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.